Depending on who you ask, it was either Glycine or Rolex who created the first GMT. Nonetheless, the time zone tracker largely gained steam during the post-war commercial travel boom of the 1950s. This era largely earmarked in history as Rolex's collaboration with Pan Am that saw the GMT master with that signature bezel. In either case, the bicolored bezel and the fourth hand have created a niche that virtually every capable watchmaker has added to their catalog, each with different variations on the theme. In this buyer's guide, we're going to explore the high-flying world of GMTs, starting with a few wallet-friendly budget picks and working our way up to some serious heavy hitters. We'll also discuss how the GMT came about, the difference in GMT type, how to properly use them, and most common styling cues to look out for. So let's dive right in. Q Timex is a line that was recently, as of 2019, revived by Timex based on 70s era models. Q, of course, referencing the quartz-powered movements at the heart of all Q Timex releases. This recent release of the Q Timex GMT simply builds in a GMT into the latest Q Timex reissue, and it's one hell of a value under $300 with loads of nostalgia. If you're looking for an excellent travel watch, but don't want to worry about the prospect of theft, the Q Timex GMT around $230 is the absolute best choice hands down. The integrated barrel shape case is 38mm in diameter with a 12.5mm thickness and a very compact 44mm lug to lug, but no surprises there. It'll wear small, perhaps even a touch smaller than the dimensions would suggest. It feels closer to a 37mm, but our wearer here maintains a wrist size just below 8 inches, so it definitely appears smaller on his wrist nonetheless. Like the recent Tissot PRX, the case styling is sharp, angular, and definitively 70s inspired, with a mix of vertical and horizontal brushing across the top of the main case and across the lugs and high polish along the sides. A Q embossing on the push pull crown keeps the court spirit at the forefront but the crown itself is extremely small. Just above, however, is our favorite part of the build, the Pepsi tension bezel. It operates without any audible clicks, but maintains just enough pressure to hold it in place. But that's the whole idea though, right? Well, yes, but a friction bezel under $300 that operates exactly how it's supposed to without any play is easier said than done, and Timex executed well. We also love the domed acrylic. It seems like everyone's riding the domed wave nowadays, and there are no complaints from us. However, expect some distortion in terms of the viewing experience. The four-handed version of this quartz reissue is exactly the same as the non-GMT reissue, but it does just change a few line items. Those include a date window at the three as opposed to a day date of the three-hander, and a piece of smiling text under the six marker letting us know about the caliber change. In this case, there's no surprise that a budget Timex GMT reissue is an office GMT versus a traveler's GMT, which we'll get into a little later. Long story short, on this watch, positioning the crown one click allows you to set the date in one direction and the bright red fourth GMT hand in the opposite direction to keep track of separate time zones. Once we take a look at our first true GMT or traveler's GMT or flyer GMT, we'll discuss the difference in operation and the difference in use case. By the way, for those that are really in the dark and no shame there, GMT stands for Greenwich Mean Time and until 1972, it was the international standard of coordinated time. It also goes by UTC now, or Universal Coordinated Time. It's essentially an abbreviation that speaks to a way in which the entire world zones can keep track of time around one standard. In the early 1980s, due to time zone adjustments and corrections to more accurately reflect the change in Earth's axis year to year that affects the length of one standard day, UTC was adopted by an international panel, and that's what's used today, even though GMT is the moniker that's held fast in the watch world. The standard three-handed Q Timex reissue used the PC33 quartz, or a Japanese movement by Seiko. However, the addition of the GMT necessitated something else, and while Timex still uses a quartz caliber, this time it's Swiss. Timex also updated the mesh bracelet that came with the first 2019 Q reissue, or the arm hair catcher as it was nicknamed. The mesh was period accurate, but the design did irritate the wrist. So now we have a single link stainless steel bracelet that almost goes even further to emphasize the whole integrated look. If you're still searching for a budget GMT, but want something that has some diver character for under $500, we have you covered, and you can largely thank user feedback for this one. It was largely a byproduct of the watch world asking Seiko to make an affordable GMT in a beloved Seiko 5 frame. Ever attentive, the release of the Seiko 5 Sports SSK001 GMT takes the icon and elevates it with an automatic GMT complication with mechanical winding, all while sporting the same external character users have come to love. Dimensionally, it's inspired by Seiko's SKX references. The 42.5mm case sports a lug-to-lug -lug of 46, a 22mm lug width, a thickness of 13.6mm, and clocks in at 148 grams with the stainless steel bracelet on the wrist. 
specs that are incredibly similar to that of the SKX007, for example. The bi-directional and bi-colored 24-hour rotating bezel screams dive watch, but we noticed it does lack the typical but distinctive clicks present in most divers on the market. But the tension bezel is still a cool vintage nod, in our opinion. And although the watch has sporty diver styling and markets a water resistance rating of 100 meters, the off-centered push-pull crown at the 4 o'clock would still make us a little wary of taking the Seiko 5 Sports GMT into the water repeatedly. Despite the standard movement now boasting an added GMT, we like the added interest of the exhibition case back putting the 24-hour caliber 4R34 movement on full display, rather than opting for a standard screw-down stainless steel case back. The classic 5-row Jubilee stainless steel bracelet of the Seiko 5 GMT is either loved or it's hated. Critics complain of an overly flexible feel, which is a byproduct of including more rows, while fans usually vocalize the opposite, stating that the 5-row construction provides a high level of comfort on the wrist. A costly, more rigid third-party option may in turn sacrifice. With fixed end links and two levels of high polish for added interest on the wrist and a simple clasp design, the bracelet is a decent budget option we tend to like, even if divisive. But if you'd rather trade for something more laid back like a rubber, silicone, or NATO strap, there are plenty of 22mm third party options. Fortified beneath the hard leg's face, Seiko's Sapphire Alternative is a stark black dial with giant loomed indices, classic large luma bright hands, a bright white date window at the 3 o'clock beneath a thick set cyclops, and a red reference text above the 6 marking the inclusion of the new GMT in case you somehow missed that fourth bright red tipped hand. So then, if you're a jet setter, corporate hustler, flat out fan of the Japanese brand, or have long wished Seiko offered up a GMT version of your favorite budget diver, the Seiko 5 Sports SSK001 GMT is certainly the best GMT option on the market in the sub $500 price tier. Red Hot Micro Brand Laurier out of New York, New York has followed up their first mid century inspired mechanical GMT with a second version, the Hyperion Series 2. We purposely sequenced the Hyperion right after the SSK001 to show that just for about $100 more, you're able to get a true or traveler's or flyer's GMT with an independent hour hand. There is heavy debate as to which is better, which is easier for travel, which is the right kind of GMT for certain kinds of travel, but generally the true or traveler's GMT is most sought after for frequent flyers if your budget allows, and in the case of the Laurier Hyperion Series 2, they've made this type of GMT accessible to nearly anyone with a price point just shy of $600. Not only does the Hyperion build in a Traveler's GMT via the Miyota 9075, but surrounding it is a beautiful mid-century inspired case, dial, and bracelet, harkening back to commercial aviation's golden age. The Series 2 Hyperion features an even more mid-century Epsilon 5-row bracelet, essentially a flat Beads of Rice style bracelet over the Series 1's standard 3-row. It also embodies shorter lugs, a more impactful handset that largely just sees the hour hand with more gilt and less loom. Not only is the Hyperion Series 2 incredibly beautiful, but it builds in a robust set of specs, like a marine grade 316L stainless steel case and a screw down crown, affording 100 meters of water resistance, an impact resistant Hesalite dome crystal and a Hesalite bezel insert, sporting a muted Pepsi palette, and extremely bright BGW9 Superluminova on the dial and hands, and C3 reserved for the bezel. Everything about the Series 2 Hyperion screams class, like it was taken straight from the wrist of a first class Pan Am passenger. This GMT is 39mm in diameter with a 46mm lug to lug and a 10.7mm thickness, 127 accounting for the domed Hesalite, which has a vintage charm that has real use case dating back to the mid 1900s like the early Omega Speedmasters. Not only does it provide a touch of nostalgia, but the material is actually incredibly impact and scratch resistant, cheaper and fairly easy to correct should anything unforeseen occur. For timing, along with the independently adjustable hour hand, the Hyperion builds in a 24-click bidirectional bezel with a 24-hour scale sporting a crisp, easy-to-adjust coin edge finish matching the embossed screw-down crown that shares a logo with the dial under the 12. Now inside, the Series 2 also uses a different movement this time around, swapping the Soprod C125 Swiss movement featuring an office GMT with the Miyota 9075 featuring a Flyers or Traveler's GMT all while decreasing the price point and aligning the Hyperion with the rest of Laurier's catalog that keeps time via Miyota's movements. Now back to the bracelet. Apart from the two-link increase, the links come fully brushed, which for casual use lends itself very well. Screw post links, three micro-adjustments on the clasp, and drilled lugs are all just impeccable attention to detail on a beautiful vintage-inspired GMT. We're seeing quite a number of watchmakers offer dive watch GMTs. The Seiko 5 Sports SSK001 we just reviewed earlier, Baltic with the Aquascape GMT, Tissot with the Seastar GMT, Belova's new Oceanographer GMT. There are quite a few notable examples, and Mito also puts their hat in the ring with the Ocean Star GMT with traditional Pepsi color styling. 
What's so great about the GMT Diver Hybrid is that it's a one-stop shop for adventures. You can both keep track of the time as you fly around the world, and once you land at your destination, you can keep the watch on your wrist for any serious excursions. The Mito Ocean Star GMT made the list not because the Ocean Star itself is a good watch and we thought to just lazily include the GMT version, but because the Pepsi styling isn't a Rolex carbon copy. Mito infuses their own design language by using a fixed internal 24-hour bezel in addition to a traditional unidirectional rotating bezel as a dive watch. Dimensionally, the Ocean Star GMT is a hefty 44mm in diameter with a 50mm load to lug and a 13.4mm thickness. On the wrist, the large diver character is evident as it definitely maintains its presence, wearing no smaller than the diameter states on paper. However, to mitigate the thickness, the Ocean Star GMT doesn't surrender to traditional old-school GMT cues, but stays modern with a flat sapphire with plenty of anti-reflective treatment for a crisp view of the blue dial underneath. The dial character of the Ocean Star GMT is most similar to the Ocean Star Chronograph, in that the GMT uses rectangular markers instead of the classic bubbly diver variants, and a sloping flange separating the crystal from the dial. Internally, this is a 24-hour fixed Pepsi unit, with the top half matching the ocean blue background and the bright red bottom half matching the fourth GMT hand. With the Mito Automatic Eta 80 caliber, you're also offered up a genuine traveler's GMT with the ability to position the crown in such a way as to move the hour hand independently for quick time zone adjustments. As the caliber's name suggests, the GMT diver builds in an impressive 80-hour power reserve for just over three full days between wines, making this watch a serious contender as a go-anywhere, do-anything timepiece. Before we move on, although the bracelet is fairly standard yet nicely finished, the real talking point is the double-button push quick adjustment system within the clasp that makes it ridiculously easy to fine-tune the fit on the wrist by pushing and pulling the extension in or out. It's not just the inclusion of a true or traveler's GMT versus an office GMT that determines the bulk of a GMT's price, but the overall build quality, movement, and finishing as well. A great example is the Monta SkyQuest 24 hour, building in an office GMT, retailing at four times the price of the Hyperion Series 2. Why? Well, the main difference here is Monta's own M23 self winding mechanical movement, making this watch a fully in house venture. For a micro brand with a history of less than 10 years, the level of quality and chronometry is noteworthy. The Coke bezel is a nod to Rolex's Pan Am collab in the 1980s that saw a GMT Master II sport a black and red bezel, as opposed to the standard red and blue unit of the original 50s collaboration. The SkyQuest is by no means an homage, however, as the design language is uniquely their own, from the case shape all the way down to the minutia of the detail. Dimensionally, the SkyQuest is a unique 40.7mm wide, 47.4mm long, and 11.8mm thick, and it wears just about how you would expect, if not the slightest bit smaller, most likely due to the compact, sloping, almost curved nature of the lugs toward the wrist. Unlike some of our previous mid-century inspired GMTs, the SkyQuest is wholly modern, with a flat beveled sapphire with an extremely generous application of not one, not two, but seven layers of anti-reflective coating applied to the underside. The case uses a deliberate mix of high polish along the side panels of the case, but mostly utilizes brushing for the rest of the components extending into the bracelet. The 24-hour bi-directional coke-colored 48-click aluminum bezel insert with a matte finish and pseudo-coin edge texture is easy to grip and it rotates with a satisfying action. In their relatively short time in business, Monta's established a reputation for their watch's finishings, and the SkyQuest is admirable in this department with a mix of high polish and brushing and plated frame dial details under the flat sapphire. The sword style hands are large, filled with bright BGW9 Swiss Super Luminova, and are rhodium plated, just like the markers that they rotate past to keep the time, as is the date window at the 6. Every element pops with a deep jet black background for a very high contrast, easy to read viewing experience on the wrist, and the fourth hand is dipped in red from the base to the tip of the arrow for quick reference. Like we said, inside you'll be getting the in-house Monte Caliber M23, visible via the caseback exhibition window that offers 56 hours of power reserve, a GMT function of course, and an accurate 4Hz beat rate. Leaving no detail unattended, our favorite part of the Monte SkyQuest experience is the bracelet. The fully articulating links are extremely comfortable on the wrist and conform at every angle. The links and half links are screwpo, so making quick adjustments for sizing is simple and straightforward, needing no special tools. For micro-adjustments, Monta leaves out the standard micro-adjustment holes in lieu of a Tudoresque push-pull quick adjustment system that allows the wearer to fine-tune the fit even further. Part of Grand Seiko's sport collection, the SBGN027 is a rugged yet refined entry-level sport GMT featuring a high-precision quartz movement with a documented accuracy of plus to minus 10 seconds per year. You may be thinking, 
$3,300 for a quartz watch? But there's a method to this madness. Let's check it out. See, with a mechanical watch pulling out the crown to adjust the time, the date, or to adjust the fourth hand for a different time zone almost always compromises accurate timekeeping. There's an inherent risk of losing or gaining time by pulling out the crown. The beauty of the Caliber 9F86 is that the quartz movement continues its timekeeping even when the crown is pulled out, which is why the hyper-accurate quartz combined with the GMT actually makes perfect sense. Plus, you also get the immaculate case finishing of Grand Seiko, whose attention to detail is bar none. At 39mm in diameter, a lug to lug of 45.9, and a thickness of 12.3, the sport watch proportions are near perfect for everyday wear. And we love the fixed 24 hour bezel with the bold black embossing, and the radial brushing that contrasts the mirror like rhodium plating on the dial's elements, and the high polish that graces the sides of the case. There's an offset screw down crown at the fore to adjust the hands, and it sits where the lug intersects the bezel, allowing it to hide just a bit more than what's typical, and it goes a long way to streamline the case. As a sports watch, the SBGN027 has a 20 bar or 200 meter water resistance rating. Like the Mito Ocean Star GMT, this is an extremely capable, adventure-ready sport watch that's classy enough to rock in first class and then equally hard-wearing for a diving trip. If you look closely, the SBGN027's dial uses a bicolored black and gray flange between the fixed outer bezel and the rich black dial. Thin rectangular markers, simple dial text, an unframed date window at the fore, and plenty of loom. Grand Seiko has three main caliber groups, the 9S Mechanical, the 9R Spring Drive, and the 9F Quartz. The SBGN027 houses the latter, as we mentioned before, and it keeps the GMT in good standing without any maintenance requirements day to day, with an overall battery life expectancy of 3 years. On the wrist, the SBGN027's case finishing extends onto the 3 link stainless steel bracelet, with full brushing on the top and high polish for the link sides. Screw posts make it easy to adjust the fit, and half links near the branded push button clasp only make this venture easier. Like diver GMTs, probably the most obvious GMT creations are pilot watch GMTs. Makes sense, right? But there are swaths of pilot watches that aren't GMTs, and plenty of GMTs that aren't dedicated pilot watches. However, the Longines Spirit Zulu Time is one of the exceptions as a truly heralded pilot watch that builds in a GMT in a new, as of 2022, smaller, highly wearable 39mm case size. Before the Spirit Zulu Time 39mm, there was a Longines Spirit Zulu Time 42mm. But the main complaint was the size, so Longines regrouped and just last year released a smaller sub 40mm aviator to appease the masses, and we have to say, we're glad they did. Not only is the 39mm more wearable dimensionally, the smaller proportions just make sense as a GMT than a traditional non-GMT pilot watch, like a Flieger, for example. We've established that it's 39mm across. Now the lug-to-lug -lug is a compact 46.7mm and 13.5mm thick. This is the stainless steel version with 18 karat yellow gold accents and needless to say, it's a stunner. But if the gold isn't quite your purview, there are 5 other more conservative variants which were released alongside ours here. And that's essentially where the updates stop, for all intents and purposes. This is the 42mm version packed into a smaller form factor because practically everything else is the same. The dial finishing, elements, the layout, the loom, the gilt hands, the bi-directional timing bezel, and the screw down crown. And even the L844.4 tucked inside, featuring a true traveler's or flyer's GMT, whatever your nomenclature preference may be. The L844.4 has a modestly accurate beat rate of 25,200 BPH with a 72 hour power reserve, with a monocrystalline silicone balance spring, and ships chronometer certified by the COSC. On the wrist, the Spirit Zulu Time 39mm is handsome and stately, and probably one of the most elegant GMTs on the market, Grand Seiko aside. The Spirit Zulu Time 39mm comes with a choice of stainless steel bracelet, fabric, or leather strap. The stainless steel version continues the case's highbrow finishes that blend rugged brushing and high polish all the way around the wrist with the generous helping of micro adjustments built into the push button clasp and two half links to really hone in the fit. In 2018, the watch world lost its mind with the release of the Tudor Black Bay GMT. Only recently, however, did we see an update with the Opaline dial version. So far, we've only included darker dials, and we had to throw this in our guide not just for the sake of variation, but because the Black Bay GMT itself is a fully integrated powerhouse from Tudor, if you're looking for a GMT in the entry-level luxury price bracket. There's a rare version of the Rolex Master GMT2 reference 6542 that maintains the same white dial colorway as this Tudor GMT, so it's highly probable that Tudor, being Rolex's close familial companion, leaned on this 50s reference for inspiration. 
In any case, the pearlesque opaline dial with the Pepsi bezel is stunning, and it stands in stark contrast to a lot of other GMTs, 95% of which are built with dark dials. 41mm in diameter with a 50mm lug to lug and about 14.5mm thick on the wrist. The Opaline Black Bay GMT rolls over what the 2018 black version did so well, including the 48 click highly precise bi directional timing bezel inset with a 24 hour Pepsi colored aluminum insert, handsome full brushing across the top of the case, and high polish reserved for the sides, a coin edge finish on the bezel and around the periphery of the screw down crown that bolsters the 200 meter water resistance rating, and a fully in house COSC caliber, the MT5652. The automatic mechanical movement has a power reserve of up to 70 hours, incredible accuracy, and builds in a flyer GMT allowing the user full control over the hour hand movement. As modern as this creation is, it still sports a vintage ethos apart from the Pepsi bezel, with the dome sapphire most notably. In typical Tudor fashion, the dial is packed with superluminova, and this opaline version has a slight curvature. Tudor says domed, but it's not as prominent as the curvature of the crystal for example. It's also galvanized, essentially meaning the dial's metal base is galvanized to prevent corrosion or degradation over the long haul. Unfortunately, the only thing we would have liked to have seen with the newer Black Bay GMT is Tudor's T-Fit adjustment system. But the bracelet on the Opaline GMT is comfy nonetheless, and the average size wearer shouldn't have any trouble adjusting the standard lengths. Also, before we close the Tudor Black Bay GMT section, if you're looking for an Explorer-esque equivalent, the Tudor Black Bay Pro is another GMT that you should certainly check out. Before we conclude, we want to make specific mention of the Rolex Master GMT2, which is unequivocally the king of all GMTs. It started them all, and the blue and red Pepsi dial is a visual icon that so many other brands have incorporated into their designs, that it's safe to say Rolex will forever hold this accolade. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to get hands on with that model to show off in this guide, but as the godfather of GMTs, it deserves a nod of respect nonetheless. As always, let us know your favorite GMT. There are dozens more we wish to include from microbrands to larger Swiss watchmakers alike, but our video could have easily inflated to hours, and we can get easily long-winded. Head over to our editorial guides which tend to pack in more pics if you didn't see your favorite represented, and we'll catch you next time.